All right, let's talk about the macro economy trend, okay? Things that we have to look out for. Because right now, if you look at the S&P 500, it's actually at the lowest point ever since 2020, okay? Our bad days is like December of 2020, but we have to look at why this is actually happening in the macro perspective, okay? Of course, we are going to be going through the big events that's actually happening, such as um, the whole Russia-Ukraine, because um, Vladimir Putin is intending to be signing a decree to be annexing um, Ukrainian uh, regions, I, if I'm not mistaken, it's four regions in Ukraine, okay, it's going to be happening uh, on Friday, which is today, when I, as I'm recording this right now. Uh, the next one is we have to talk about the whole Nord Stream pipeline, pipeline because uh, Nord Stream 1 and 2 basically got attacked, okay, we're not sure who attacked it, chances are it is Russia, and that's going to be putting a lot of inflationary pressure and even more geopolitical potential as well, okay? Because if they were to attack the entire Nord Stream pipeline, it means that gas, is uh, natural gas and oil is not going to, you know, equally distribute out to all the other regions and such. And when that actually happened, and we are coming into a winter as well, and that's when most of the energy is actually being used, especially for countries that go through the four seasons, okay? So that's when they actually need the most energy. And if the both Nord Stream 1 and Nord Stream 2 gets completely obliterated, no natural gas is going to get distributed and that's going to be causing a huge inflationary pressure on the market, okay? And lastly, we have to talk about QE and QT, okay? These are basically the uh, topics that um, I think someone was talking about it in this Tesla group in Singapore. Um, this is a Telegram group where we basically talk about um, things about Tesla and yesterday we were talking about macro trends and I feel that I really wanted to make this video because I want to uh, maybe go through some of my opinions that I actually have uh, for the macro trends that we actually will be going through in this market as well. Okay, so first of all, I think the decree to be annexing Ukrainian uh, re regions, I think it doesn't really come as a surprise that we think that Vladimir Putin is this cold-blooded dictator, but whatever it is, I think it's safe to assume that any sort of thought to invest into Russia's economy is completely out the window because Russia is intending to just castle themselves up together and they don't really care about the rest anymore. They just want to get into Ukraine no matter what. Okay, so if you even have the thought about buying Russia's currency, buying Russia's stock, buying whatever, the, anything to do with Russia, I think it is time for you to really kind of give up. But of course, again, not financial advice. You know, you never know, maybe in five years, Russia just go back to the moon. I don't know. Okay, and then we have to talk about Nord Stream. Uh, pipeline one and two, I think that's going to be huge inflationary pressure. Of course, I I keep on talking about inflation simply because inflation has really been this huge topic that we have in the past two years. Okay, especially with the stimulus that the market has been getting um, ever since the pandemic happened, and all the different stimulus that is actually happening right now due to due to inflation. Okay, I don't know how can I say this more with more uh, like technicality but due to inflation they're giving more stimulus okay that's what california is doing and that's completely stupid but hey you know if people who are you know the working class and uh, the middle class and whatnot they really need the money i get it inflation is hitting them badly i get it but by going through stimulus you're just making it even worse and the worst part is that the stimulus is not only going to the people who are in the working class and middle class the stimulus are going to people who are even earning $500,000 a year. So, hey, man, I mean, yeah, you can call it what you want, okay? So I don't think that uh, inflation is going to be stopping anytime soon, okay? And because of what the Nord Stream Pipeline 1 and 2 is going to be going through, I think that's going to be even worse. Okay, finally, we have to talk about QE and QT. I think this is going to be one of the biggest things that we have to talk about, okay? Why I think the macro trend is going to be turning in a different direction. Okay, because in 2020, when the pandemic actually happened, we got a huge amount of QE happening. Okay, for people who are unaware, QE and QT is basically basically quantitative easing and quantitative um, tightening. Okay, easing of the money and tightening of the money. When the pandemic happened, the stocks market basically just dropped like 20%, 10% throughout. Okay, and that actually went on for days. So the market was actually bleeding out quite badly during the March of 2020. And I'm pretty sure if you look at any sort of chart whatsoever in 2020, 
It doesn't matter if it's your tech company, if it's your blue chip company, it's your oil company, okay? Whatever sort of industry you're looking at, they're most likely going to have a huge cut by about 30% to even 40 and even 50% for some of them as well, okay? So the pandemic definitely destroyed a huge part of the economy. And that is also why the United States decided, oh, you know what, we're going to print more money, which of course at the time, this action of QE makes a lot of sense because they have to help to recover the economy. However, this QE went on for quite some time. This QE actually went on for over two, uh, no, uh, for over a year, okay? And only around the, the end of 2021, then they decided we need to start doing some QT. And of course, I think the QT came a little bit too late and it wasn't fast enough, nor was it strong enough. And because the QT did not come fast enough and strong enough, the QE basically eroded the currency too much to the fact that inflation took over with the huge impact that now we are unable to actually retract the whole entire inflation that's out of control. Of course, right now, they have multiple ways for them to actually bring down inflation. And the worst case scenario that we actually have is actually stagflation, okay? Which is for a long period of time, we have persisting inflation with consistent rising costs and just not good growth overall. And I think that that's the worst case scenario that we can get. Because if we have a persisting economy where prices keep on going up and everyone do not really get any growth in their wages and such, okay, of course, we can actually argue the which price spiral is going to be a huge thing. But at the same time, everything is kind of like going into Armageddon. And, and I think that that's kind of like the biggest uh, part of it that is why people are so concerned about. And that's why. So I feel that, you know, if you, you have multiple ways for you to actually bring it back down, if you want to, okay, or well, if the feds want to, okay, they can actually do just like a huge QT, okay? They just tighten it out. They just raise the um, basis point by 200 basis point, just hike up the interest rate, did what Paul Volcker did, okay, and force a recession. Okay, because let's be honest here, we are right now in a textbook recession as it is, and I don't think that this actually comes as a surprise. But of course, White House and of course the um, Federal Reserve came out to say, now nah, we're not really in a recession. Okay, even though the textbook uh, recession, the definition for recession is actually two consecutive um, years of negative GDP. Oh no, two two uh, two negative quarters of GDP. Two years, geez. Now, two negative quarters of uh, uh, negative GDP equates to a recession. That's the textbook definition, and we are actually in it as it is. Okay, so since that is already the case, I feel that they should just force the recession and then afterwards do a little bit of QE to kind of um, compensate for the amount of QT that they actually went over, which is what Paul Volcker did. I think that would make a lot more sense rather than you just doing a little bit of QT. 50 basis point, 50 basis point, 50 basis point. Because at that kind of rate, it's true that Jerome Powell is trying to strive for a softish lending, according to him. Getting a softish lending when inflation is consistently going up is not exactly the best case scenario, nor is it a very ideal case scenario idea either. If anything, I feel that we should force a recession and from there, you start to do a little bit of QE. Of course, people are going to get mad, but, you know, I don't think people are absolutely happy about the current situation that we are going through right now as well. And let's be honest, and my point one and point two about the whole Russia-Ukraine situation, and of, of course with the uh, not one and two, those things are going to be affecting supply chain issues, and at the same time, they're going to be affecting inflation as well, which then kind of brings it all into a huge circle again, which is persisting inflation all over again. Okay, so in the next FOMC, chances are we're probably going to see a 50 basis point increment or a 75 basis point increment. And let's be honest, even getting a 50 or 75 basis point increment, chances are, okay, because looking at how the jobs report is actually quite good, that's why Jerome Powell thinks that, ah, it's, it's actually all right, we can actually continue to uh, do more QT. I feel that he should just slap us hard, get it over and done with, okay, because right now we are not really seeing any change in the inflation even like I said in a lot of my videos as it is, okay, getting 0% inflation month over month for the rest of the year 
is still going to equate to about 5 to 6% inflation year over year. That is not normal. Okay, we're expecting 2% inflation year over year as a norm. This is almost three times of what a norm is going to be like. Okay, so I think the whole QE and QP uh, ratio is completely out of whack. I do not know what the Feds are doing. And of course, I understand that because yesterday I was also going through some discussion with uh, some of the members in the Tesla group. They also brought up uh, the possibility that the Feds are actually not really in a very nice place either simply because they cannot just, you know, bring up the QT by 200 basis point increment because if that were to be the case, then they are also borrowing money at a very, very high interest rate. And that way, it will also affect the debt, the whole debt ceiling and the amount of money that US actually owes. But at the same time, let's be honest, so the US is already in like tens of trillions of dollars in debt. And even just yesterday, they even... Well, they did not really introduce a stop gap bill. They already did it last year, literally last year, like 365 days ago. They already introduced the stop gap, uh, stop gap bill to uh, increase the debt ceiling. And right now they're doing it all over again. They have to stop it simply because they cannot shut down the government. And like what I, I will, that's what I'm saying right now. It, you know, I feel that they're going through a lot of motions and if they really want to, they should just force the recession and we have to rebuild. ASAP. I don't know why. Well, I, I can't know why. It's simply because of midterm election as well. I think Joe Biden do not want to have a recession um, on his name when he's running for the second term. Jerome Powell do not want to be in a recession when he is the chairman of the Federal Reserve. I, I can see uh, the perspective and such, uh, but I think it's very, very selfish because this inflation is going to eat the middle class alive the middle class is not going to come out of this alive if this inflation continues like this. And to end it all off, inflation might be 6, 7, 8% right now. Okay. But let's be honest, the actual inflation that we're actually going through in our life is not really 8%. It's more like 12, 14, and even 20%. Food prices in general has already risen over 13% in the last year. Just food prices alone, okay? I'm not talking about all your different things that's included in the CPI. Just food prices on its own has really increased 13% in the last year. So yeah, and I'm talking about food prices as a whole. If you actually want to get down to the nitty-gritty of things, eggs, I think they went up like, what, 28% or something stupid. So yeah, and of course, those are prices in the United States. I'm not sure where you're watching this from. If you're from if you're watching from Singapore, I'm pretty sure that you also realize that the eggs prices are going up, meat prices are going up, um, food that you have, that are all packaged food are also all going up, and things like that. And I think the inflationary pressure is actually very, very real, which is why I like to cover what what's happening in the United States. I'm very, very thankful that in Singapore, we are not really receiving those inflationary pressure as hard as it is in the United States. But at the same time, it is a form of a um, indicator for us where we can actually see what's happening in the United States. And afterwards, we are most likely going to get um, a small brunt of what's going to be happening in Singapore as well. But anyway, yeah, those are just the macro economy stuff that uh, like the macro trends that I'm actually looking at right now. Uh, I think the market is not exactly looking the best. Okay. But um, hopefully, hopefully, you know, um, people do not just panic sell because I don't see, I don't think that we are going to uh, get destroyed completely. And even if you want to really just sell everything in your portfolio, of course, again, not financial advice. But if you want to sell everything in your portfolio right now, let's be honest, it's kind of late to do so as it is. And right now, even if you were to sell everything, you know, maybe there's another 10 more percent to the bottom. But I feel that instead of you having the possibility of losing 10% or a rebound can come in at any time, I think we kind of really missed the boat on selling. So if that's the case, you can just might as well just hold on to it unless you are a trader, a day trader, a swing trader. Then, of course, I'm pretty sure that you are able to make those decisions yourself. But anyway, I think that you should just kind of stay invested if you can. Okay. And of course, I'm, I'm saying this because investment should be money that you are willing to lose uh, to begin with. So I hope that you guys invest safe as well. But anyway, that's all I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys uh, in the next one. Bye.